Back here on this Saturday morning, Sports Medicine Weekly, Steve Cashel, Dr. Brian Cole. And don't forget, our website is sportsmedicineweekly.com. And that's where you could ask the doctor a question. It's time now for our Ask the Doctor segment, giving our listeners the opportunity to have Dr. Cole address their specific sports injury issues. It's very easy. Go to our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com. Go to the homepage and look for the picture of yours truly and Dr. Cole. And click on the link, and you can ask the doctor a question. All ready, Doc? I am ready. Challenge me. Question number one. What is dead arm syndrome, and what causes it? So, Steve, dead arm syndrome certainly has to be differentiated from a stinger, which we'll sometimes see in football players where they get a direct blow to the neck or the head in a very tough position that causes transient compression of uh, nerves in the neck and the spinal cord. But a dead arm syndrome is something that I see in typically in females, uh, but can be in males. And it can happen when the arm is forcibly put in a position that it wants to subluxate or dislocate. It wants to come out of the socket. And what and it's believed to be due to a stretch of the brachial plexus. So a brachial plexus are uh, all the nerves that start up in the neck and travel across the front of your upper shoulder above the collarbone and go through the armpit. That's the brachial plexus. That yep. has all the nerves that supply the upper extremity from your for your elbow, wrist, and hand, and fingers, and so forth. And um, when there's a provocative position that the arm goes into, it provides excessive stretch, believed to, to be to the brachial plexus, and it causes uh, significant pain. It could be a, almost a paralyzing pain, a very sharp discomfort, uh, and numbness, and so forth. And sometimes it can be left with a little bit of weakness. The other place I see it is in girls, typically, who are really hypermobile joints, the so-called double-jointed, which is really not an accurate reflection, but double jointed, if you will, uh, who have very loose shoulders. I see it in swimmers and volleyball players and so forth. And they say, look, every once in a while I put my arm in a very prov- provocative position overhead with the rotated backwards, or I carry something at the side and the shoulder partially comes out of socket and it stretches the brachial plexus and they feel like their whole arm goes dead or numb. That's what dead arm syndrome is. And to treat it, uh, typically you have to deal with the underlying condition, which is most commonly shoulder instability. And if a patient's never had a dislocation, a lot of times that shoulder instability can be corrected with physical therapy. So we always try to uh, minimize the you know the need for surgery, and therapy can be very helpful. All right, question number two, before we say goodbye on this Saturday morning for Sports Medicine Weekly, what are the most common running injuries you see, Doc? Well, there's a lot of them, but I'd say far and away is uh, what we call patellofemoral pain syndrome or anterior knee pain. And this is a condition where there's muscle imbalance across the kneecap joint that hurts both knees symmetrically. Uh, people don't like going up and down, typically downstairs, because they'll have discomfort. There's no swelling. Uh, there's a sign called the movie theater sign where people sit with the knee bent for a long time. Uh, more Again, more common in women than men, just based upon how their hips are, are, are built. And um, it gets better with uh, strengthening, uh, glute media strengthening, uh, changing uh, running techniques and, and so forth. But improving flexibility and strengthening almost always fixes the problem. Uh, certainly running doesn't make it worse structurally, but uh, doing proper exercises can get rid of it so they have uh, less or no symptoms while running. We sometimes see Achilles tendonitis. That's also uh, treated with rice, uh, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Hamstring strains, not as common, but uh, I've had one of those myself. Um, And uh, plantar fasciitis, that's otherwise known as heel spurs, we see that. Uh, Shin splints, which is uh, at the front of the tibia or the shin bone, gets very, very uncomfortable. Uh, another common one is iliotibial band syndrome, but that's also known as runner's knee, where the outer side of the leg is very painful with repetitive activities. That's one you never want to run through. So if you get this burning pain on the outer side of the knee that gets worse with increasing activities, walking on banked surfaces, new pair of shoes, or the shoes wear out, that can cause this ITB syndrome, iliotibial band syndrome. So those are some of the most common things that we'll see. All righty, we're out of time. Great stuff. Many thanks to our producer and board operator, as always, Shane Reardon. Our coordinating producer is Tracy Toro. also want to thank David Cole for managing the website and our business operations, as well as Samantha Smith from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. For Dr. Brian Cole, I'm Steve Cashel. Saying so long, thanks for listening to Sports Medicine Weekly here on The Score. Up next, Early Odds with Joe Ostrowski. Be back with you next week, next Saturday, another edition of Sports Medicine Weekly, only on 670 The Score.